back when I was living in Chicago, my friend, my guy, I'm going to say his name, Logo. I call him Logo. He, he moved down to Chicago and he said he had a spare room and I could fill in if I wanted. Now, at this time, I didn't have nothing going for me. Everything was in the beginning stages. So it got to a point where I was behind rent five, six months. And he won't say it because he's, like I said, he's my guy. He's my friend. But I was, I'm was i fortunate to have somebody like that in my life. And throughout that time, maybe I, I get scavenged together like a couple hundred dollars. But he would always say, you know, I know you're good for it. Some, at some point or another, things will turn around. But during that time, I would sell like whatever I had, like bundles of socks, T-shirts, my TV, whatever I had. Month to month, I was just selling just in a sincere way that, you know, I'm trying, man. Right. I'm doing what I can. But the last thing I didn't want to sell was uh, this Jackie Robinson jersey. Most things are replaced. I mean, everything is replaced. They're just things. All these things that you have at one point or another, whether it's your phone, your TV, your shoes, whatever, your laptop, whatever it is, your house, everything gets replaced. Um, they're just things. But this jersey was like, it is the only personal item I had real sentimental value for. It was the last thing in my past that uh, had fond memories. I'd gotten it when my stepfather um, and my mother, they got promoted at their jobs. And so they decided to take us to the base, my family to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. And this was the year they decided to re-enshrine Jackie Robinson's monument in Cooperstown. And during that weekend, they sold these limited edition Jackie Robinson jerseys. So I got it. And the first time I wore it is when I got to go see my favorite player, Derek Jeter, play. Like, it was a moment when I was a kid, you know. It was a significant totem of, you know, the budding relationship my stepfather and I were building. But at this point, like, I'm... Then they kicked me out. We got in a fist fight. Like things, yeah. it was the last thing I had that was a fond memory, and I didn't want to give that up. But it came to a point where I finally had to sell it. And the silver lining is, the second I posted on the internet. It's getting all these hits. It's an old jersey. It's decades old. It's got some, it had some stains from like uh, laundry detergent or whatever. But there's people hitting me because it's limited edition. They haven't seen it before. The patches, the, the design of the jersey and everything. Sure enough, I sell it to this guy and he messages me. If you ever come across any other vintage throwback or limited edition jerseys, let me know. I'm looking for this Black Sox jersey when they threw the World Series. And that was the real silver lining in it because the fact that that happened, the light bulb went out in my mind that, okay, I could, I should be looking more on the internet for jerseys to resell and I can make more money doing that. And long story short, that's in what I'm doing and doing well at it. And that's one, another whole story for another day. But I think all of us, at a certain point, you grow a little bit apathetic about people. Uh, you know, a lot of the sermons or people talking about God on the Internet can get a little redundant. And it could be kind of, it, at least for me, during this t time period of my life, it just felt like a lot of people's wishful thinking. You know. But... Oh, man. I saw this one. I forgot who said it, so I can't even give them credit. But they had mentioned that there are certain moments in your life where you're going to have to give up something that means something to you so you can get more. That more often than not, the biggest blessings in your life come with the, the expense of your pride. You're going to have to express humility and trust right? that what you're willing to give you'll receive more in return in time, right? It's like nothing is like happens right away. And this is the truest moment for that for me because I will always watch this guy's page that I sold it to. And I was like, 
anxiously hoping and waiting that, you know, maybe one day he'll post it again because he doesn't want it. You know, maybe he bought it thinking he could sell it for more. There's so many things. So I was like hoping and praying. And seven years later, man. Oh, man. I bought it back. I bought it back. I'll show people, see? Cooper's Down Collection. <laughs> How crazy is that? How crazy is that? <laughs> the best way I could describe this is uh, this was really a little piece of a God moment for me. It won't change the world or anything like that, but it did restore a bud of faith in me, man. That doing the right thing is always the right thing. And it was, <laughs> like I said, those I got a whole bunch of stories. Um, these seven years haven't been easy, right? But doing the right thing is always the right thing. Now, for him to receive the new, Jordan has to let go of that. And I know it's tough for you. I know this is hard. Letting go of, let, letting go of this thing that you've gone to, he must let go. Now, because oftentimes we think right when we let go, drop it. Right when we let go, God's going, here you go. Do you trust him enough to surrender the known securities of your life for the unrevealed mysteries of God's blessings. To follow God's calling, it will require us to surrender good things in life 